so it, it keep it keeps it interesting. But uh, thanks for coming on anyway. Obviously, Ken, myself and Kerry have been kind of back and forward. She's passed me on a couple of links and bits and pieces. Sure. So I know that you are obviously quite you're quite a, a, a relatively new band, and you are also a man down. So there is four of you. Yeah. There's only three of you there tonight. Um, yeah, but just kind of going. Body for the cold. It's an excuse not to go That's fine. We'll, we'll still mention them anyway. But uh, for the three guys that are there, I'll just kind of do it one by one then. So, where are each of you from originally? <laughs> you want to start, Dave? <laughs> originally, I'm from New Mexico, but I uh, spent most of my adult life in Chicago, and now I live in Glasgow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're a multinational. Brilliant. It's a, great, it's a great draw when we're trying to book gigs, you know. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what about I'm yourself? And I'm from East Kilbride. The wonderful yep. town of East Kilbride. Very exotic. Love it. <laughs> uh, I'm Kerry and I'm from Blanta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David, by the way. I did not say my name. <laughs> and then Mike is. Yeah, yeah, that, that's. Mike's our re- resident Englishman, and he's from Crew. Yeah. yeah. He's been here for like, 10 years now? Yeah, nine or 10 years, yeah. yeah. Gonna make up. So what you're basically trying to do is... Yeah. Oh, go ahead, sorry. What you're trying to do is you're trying to have a set fan base in every country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So regardless of where you tour or where you go, you've got, you've got, you've got uh, roots in each country that you go to, at least. <laughs> yeah. Just, so see for um, each of you, again, I'll just do it, we'll, we'll go round everybody, so see um, growing up when you were younger, were, were, were you into music from a very young age or was it something that you kind of, you know, like, like a lot of people that have been on the podcast, a lot of them are influenced by their parents, you know, you just hear your parents listen to music when you're growing up. And it's always when you kind of get to the age of about maybe 11, 12, when you're starting high school, that all of a sudden you meet new friends and you all of a sudden you just get introduced to all this new stuff. For each of you, were you into music growing up? And how did you kind of, when did you, when did the light bulb thing go off when you kind of developed your own taste? Well, I, I grew up... Start with you, Dave. My, my uncles were, were musicians, so growing up I, I was exposed to a lot of hair metal. So I've got a soft spot for right. for that kind of stuff. But then I, in, probably when I was 14 or 15, I discovered punk rock and that kind of was the downhill spiral that <laughs> led me to a <laughs> lifetime of pursuing music. And, and, that, and that spiral never stopped. Exactly. <laughs> that downward spiral continues to this day. Yeah, it pursuing it. That's it. Yep. <laughs> pursuing it, yeah. yeah. What about yourself, Neil? Uh, yeah, um, well, my dad's a guitarist, he's a bass player when he was younger, and he played guitar, so when I was growing up, there was a lot of kind of acoustic guitar and folk music, and not folk music, more kind of like country, blues, rock sort of stuff, and uh, he would play a lot of bands like Led Zeppelin, Free, um, from, from when he was young, so I was kind of into that. I love folk music as well, I had Spice Girl CDs and all the rest of it, you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, but then, like you say, you know, you go to high school and you meet other people and suddenly you hear a, like a pop punk band or something for the first time, totally blows you away and, and, and that's what happened to me, you know, so, um, yeah, definitely enough. I, I played guitar since I was very little and um, just always tried to be playing wherever I was, just a mercenary guitarist. Oh, do you need me for the night kind of thing, you know, so all through high school and stuff. Love it. What about yourself, Kerry? Um, I was super into Spice Girls for a long time. <laughs> Just like me. Yeah. Yep. And then probably the first not pop album I bought was um, the acclaimed Chocolate Starfish in the Hot Dog Flavoured Water <laughs> by Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Much to my father. Well, there, there's a que- <laughs> sorry. There's a question for the other two. There's a question for the other two guys. What was the? Do you remember what the first album was that you ever bought using your own money? Yeah, I do. What was it, Dave? The long yeah, go for track. It. <laughs> <laughs> but followed quickly by Dookie. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, mine was uh, Enemy of the State by Blink One Eighty Two. That was that was my first album that I paid for. 
I remember right. And what about since we're talking about first things, what was what was each of your first concerts that you went to? Corn. Seriously? <laughs> that was your first concert? Yeah, my stepdad took me. I can't remember. Where, where was that? Uh, the SECC. Right, okay. It was awesome, to be fair. <laughs> I loved it. I, I genuinely cannot remember. I actually think it might have been, like, first proper concert was the Alkaline Trio. Um, in, I don't know, whenever, whatever year Good Morning dropped, we played the Battlelands. I think that was the first time I went to see, like, a proper rock band. Yeah. 2001. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Uh, mine was Motley Crue. <laughs> nice. In, you're, you're really flying that hair metal flag. Yeah, in, in 1988, <laughs> my uncles took me. Um, but the first concert I, I paid for with my own money was Bush and Veruca Salt. Wow. Yeah. Right. Okay. Did you say 1988? It was 1988. Yeah, I was, that was the year I was born. Uh, <laughs> I'm the elder statesman of the band. So, um, did. Dave, what instrument is it that you're playing? Guitar. Your guitar. Uh, Neil? Uh, vocals and rhythm guitar, I suppose. And Kerry's drums. Yeah. And then the the soldier that's missing in action is obviously bass guitar. Yes, yeah, Mike. Yeah, he's bass. He's the bassist yeah. and the, uh, um, the encyclopedia of science fact. Yeah. <laughs> that Mr. Mr. Star Wars? I don't think he's even They're all Mr. Star Wars. Yeah, we're all Mr. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel like every... I've already been... Oh, sorry, Kerry, I've already... you have already warned me. Yeah, you can <laughs> that. I feel like every band photo we had, one of us is wearing a Star Wars shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you like, that's what you like, mm -hmm. eh? So, how did each of you get... It? Like, Kerry, why did you start playing the drums? Did you play any other instruments? What was it that made you want to pick up the drums? Um, I was playing flute and I was pretty good at flute. <laughs> and then when I went to high school, um, they wanted me to join the school band. And they were like, you, right. we're not going to give you any more lessons if you, if you don't join the school band. And like, I didn't know why I joined the school band. So I ditched flute and I took up drums instead and that was way more fun. <laughs> yep. What about yourselves, the other two guys with playing the guitar? I mean, I'm a guitarist as well, and uh, I mean, there's millions of guitarists out there. But is that was that your first instruments that you picked up? Uh, I did a tiny bit of violin in primary school, but, <laughs> but no, no, I, I did. I really started learning properly on guitar. I was really young when I started learning. I was about eight or nine years old uh, when I started. Mm -hmm. Kind of influenced by my dad. My dad played that. Like, that was that was pretty much it. I wanted to do it, oh, but my parents said absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, then I wanted to play yeah. bass because everybody played guitar. And uh, my uncles, who were both guitar players, convinced me that you should learn guitar because if you learn guitar, you can always play bass. But it's difficult going by the yeah. so I picked guitar and stuck with it. <laughs> and I still can't play bass. So, my the... life. yeah. I'm still struggling to play the guitar, but we, we get by. Exactly. <laughs> so, the band itself, Low Level Monk, How? when did the band start? Uh, January 2022 is when we first got together. And how did you how did you get together? Was it through social media? Uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, I think we all went through Join My Band, yeah. didn't we? No, it was Facebook. Yeah. Meeting strange men on Facebook. Oh, much. Yeah. oh yeah, I recruited you on yeah. Facebook, didn't I? Yeah, I we um I so you and I went through join my bands. Yeah. There was there was uh, an individual um uh, named Marty who put an ad up and joined my band. Uh, they were a bass player. Um and it was just kinda I wanna form like a pop punk band, a yin and you know, I said, Yeah, I wanna sing, David uh, came in as the, the guitar player and uh, I recruited Kenny on Facebook because we couldn't find a drummer. Um, and we all got together and we had a terrible rehearsal session where we all played songs we promised to learn and I never learned them. And, yeah, um, somebody didn't learn them. <laughs> and then uh, the person who put the band together just texted us the next day and was like, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm going to leave. But we stayed together yeah. um, and we, we decided right. we would keep kind of plugging through it, you know. And it took a while to find money. Yeah. 
So here's a here's a good question for you. So the band's been on the go maybe a couple of years, right? How did you come up with the band name? Because see the amount of bands that I have known through the years that they split up before they can even play their first gig because they fall out over the band name. <laughs> I had a ton of How did you? Yeah. 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 So the suggestions were coming left, right and center from somebody <laughs> over there. And one day I was just sitting on the sofa, flipping through Instagram as one does. And I found this post that this comedian did about a guy that was LARPing in the woods. And they, while they were doing it, they discovered a dead body and tried to resurrect it. <laughs> and uh, so, because he's, he's, there's a line in it where he's like, and I tried, I tried to spell, but I'm a healing monk or something like that. Yeah, I'm a low level yeah. healing monk. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I sent it to the guys oh. and instantly Carrie's like, that's the name. <laughs> Is that me? Yeah. The boys, you were like, what about low level monk? And that was us. Yeah, and it stuck. Yeah. And just stayed with it. Until, until you can find uh, something better or be bothered thinking up something better, you just go with it. Yeah, pretty much. That, yeah. that's, usually, that's usually the best thing to do. Yeah. 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 But um, who see each of your musical influences? Is that what what is that the same as the band's musical influence? Like, what, what are the bands that you kind of looked at and you go? Well, that's kind of the direction that we kind of want to go in, sound-wise. I think there's a, a bunch yeah. of bands that we're all into, and then we yeah. kind of all branch off, but we do have, like, a, you, like you, some in common. You get, like, four kind of, like, we're all into kind of punk in some level, but you get, like, four really distinct, you know, like, Dave brings, like, uh, Midwest kind of punk rock, and, like, really... Dave, Dave knows everything. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Midwest emo. Well, that as well, yeah, a bit of that, but that kind of, like, a lot of that's quite obscure, because it's, like, bands are maybe even were big in the States, but um, then get a lot of mainstream play over here, and Kerry's into really weird, dark stuff, and angry <laughs> punk, and uh, weird... I like can't... angst. Yeah, yeah, that's all, you're all looking for that weird energy, and uh, and Mike's kind of, he's, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, hardcore, and, like, yeah, he kind of likes it. He likes some experimental, kind of, proggy stuff, I, he's going to... But he, he's mad at me for saying that. But yeah, he's gonna be, yeah. But he likes it, kind of like a bit I mean, heavier, I, a bit closer to metal. And I'm, and I'm all pop punk. I, every, I, you know, we would, we would be covering nineties uh, um, dance hits if it was up to me. I, I just, uh, I'm thinking it's that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I listened to the couple of songs that um, that Kerry had sent us across. That's on your Spotify, and I was getting very much like Ramones, Bad Religion, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah, but I mean, there, there, there's millions of bands out there like similar to that, and then you just kind of got to try and I suppose create your own little sound in there, and yeah, and uh, it's quite good because all of these have all got slightly different um, influences. Yeah. everybody then contributes something, even whether they don't realise it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got so like our kind of main set that we play live. You look at maybe I don't know, like 10, 12 songs, and they're all. They're not like hugely mm -hmm. different. I think we have a distinct enough sound, but um, you know the tempo is different, and it kind of leans maybe more towards different genres. So it's very mixed, and it's good. It's great playing it because you're not. It's not samey. You know, you're doing something like here's kind of something slower, or here's a pop punky song, and then here's something a bit faster and a bit heavier. So it makes makes it quite dynamic. It's quite interesting. Yeah. It's, it's fun writing a song because people want to bring all those different elements into it. You know. Well, I was going to ask you about about songwriting. How do you, as a band, go about songwriting? So, for example, do, does one of you go away, come up with an idea, and bring a, a, a half complete song to a practice, and then everyone contributes to make it better, or do you just meet up with no ideas and you simply jam and see what happens, or is it a bit of both? We tend to come come in with ideas, and we all contribute to the songwriting process as well, which is a unique situation for me in bands where Gary writes songs, Neil writes songs, Mike writes songs, and I write music, and then Neil writes the lyrics. <laughs> um, and we, and we all just kind of we bring yeah. the ideas together, and we kind of shape it and form it, and arrange it if need be, rearrange it. And we we, we can be playing it for six months, and then say, now we need something different in the middle of it, you know, and. Uh, but it's all everybody contributes. But yeah, definitely, it like, starts with an idea. Um, yeah. Someone says, "I've got lyrics," or "I want to sing about this," or "I've got this," "I've got melody," a riff, uh, and then we just all four of us get into it and, and bring something to it. Well, 
I was going to ask you as well, Neil, if you're the singer, are you pretty much doing the the lyrics? Because, for example, I, I done a podcast yesterday. It's, it won't be out until a couple of weeks' time. And uh, most people or bands I know, there's usually the band themselves might create the song, but there's usually the, the vocalist is maybe the, the one that writes the lyrics because he knows he's going to be singing them, right? Whereas the person that I spoke with yesterday, and I'd never heard this before, but it was the drummer that came up with most of the lyrics, yeah. but the drummer, the, the singer would then get together and between the two of them, they could come up, they, they could complete the lyrics for each song. And, uh, and then this is how we want it sung, and this is the idea I've kind of got. Um, is it yourself that, for lyrics wise, is it mostly yourself, or are you quite like, I'll write this, I'm happy to accept any suggestions from anyone else? It's kind of like that. Um, it, it's, it's mixed. Um, I mean, you know, um, Kenny writes entire songs, and um, I, I always argue that Kenny's written our best songs, to be honest, which we haven't recorded yet, but we will get to. Um, but yeah, I yep. mean, um, a, a lot of the time the idea starts with lyrics, so whoever brings it. But then, you know, you've got Mike. Mike can put a whole song together, like every instrument, and say, this is what everybody should be playing. But he'll say, I'm, I don't want to, you know, Neil, you do the lyrics kind of thing. Or, but we, um, I mean, were your latest one with. I gave Mike the lyrics yeah. and the melody, and he um, done the song on his computer. And yeah. We'll learn it as a band, like when this gig's done. Um, or it hits up where yeah. it's kind of like a. Like you'd written it and I just cropped it a little bit, yeah. or and then you do that for me where I'm, I'm like I need a line um, that ties in, you know. It's it's definitely. I mean, if you listen to the two singles, if you if you listen the two songs, sorry, that, that are on Spotify, um, you know, um, like that's an example of it where uh, one of the tracks "Do It for Love" is something that kind of we all brought in. Um, and uh, there's like kind of lyrical ideas from everybody in it, um, and then you've got the "Go and Dance" and such one, which is just some daft I wrote years ago, you know. Like, um, and, we, and we all formed the, the music together, but I had the lyrics yeah. already, you know. I mean, I suppose playing in a band, um, it generally works better when ego is left at, at the door before you you go in and start jamming because. You know, everybody's there hopefully to, to to make the best sound possible. So why would you stop someone from putting forward their idea? It, it might not work this time, it might work later on, but mm. it's pretty cool to, to at least hear everyone, let everyone contribute and and then hopefully you get the best sound out of it. Yeah. And then but those two songs that you've got up on that you've released last year that's on Spotify, how did you record them? Um, we're at Red Eye Studios right now, and there was a guy that was recording here, and we done it with him. Yeah, it was Gordon McNeil at uh, Stella Sound. I think he's still doing it. He's not doing it in Red Eye anymore, but I think he's still uh, he's still producing and recording. Um, yeah, he's out of his house. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did he did the two songs. Right. He he recorded it and mixed and mastered them for us. Yeah, uh, it was great. Yeah. Or your type type of music that you're doing though are. You, are you record? Are you making everything up and recording live, or are you doing it like, for example, record the drums first and yeah, then we have the bass live. and then the guitar? Yeah, we, we tracked it. Yeah, we did it individual parts. Yeah, yeah, we're um, we're planning an EP this year. We want to get into it and then have it out by the summer. You know, we're kind of getting there with it. So you, we're now talking about well, what's a different way we could do it. You know, how how could we change our approach to? It? change it up so I know that there's anything wrong with the tracks we've done just I think we're always learning as well. yeah you know we're, we're always kind of learning yeah the best way if it works it works but yeah pile and error that's it yeah try different things up. and that first recording and what pretty, about oh, sorry that first recording experience was great we just yeah, yeah good we time. had a really good time yeah, yeah. it's just it's not in our home studio anymore yeah I mean I listened to it and um you can hear everything crystal clear, you know. So, I mean, I don't really know what else you want from a recording, but it sounded good to me. I mean, definitely it sounds to me like you should just continue on the route that you're kind of going because you've obviously got your sound, just continue down that path. But with regard to gigs, did you did you just start gigging? Yeah. Yeah, January. Or, yeah. 
It was scary to admit that. <laughs> was one, we liked a lot of people getting them. One of them in It was one of them in Largs. And no, that's this weekend. Yeah, that's this weekend. Yeah, that's with oh, uh, that's with that's with Dave's so how did, band. So, <laughs> is this your second? This your second gig as a band? That'll be our third. Third, third yeah. yeah. So how did the first couple go? First one was fantastic. Yeah, I, I, yeah we um, we were really lucky. And we you jumped on a Facebook post, wasn't it? Yeah. For, uh, for this band Dookie um, from England, uh, who are a Green Day tribute band, and they came up and played audio. And they posted up, said, oh, look, we're playing right. Glasgow, we need support. Kerry jumped on it. And they said yes. And then I, I was freaking out for like two weeks. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're not ready. Why are we doing this kind of thing? Um, no, that gig was... Yeah. Fantastic! We had, we had a blast, and uh, it was just like the audience that we had. We did like, like they have a great big crowd to play to. Everybody was there for Dookie, but yeah, everybody... some people loved us. Yes, yeah. they, yeah. they they were great taking a chance on us, and it was uh, yeah, it was a good opportunity to kind of jumpstart things. And mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully that continues. It was a big confidence boost, definitely. They did a lot for our social media and stuff like that. Yeah, a drunk guy kept kissing Dave, which was yeah, he kept funny. giving me kisses. Yeah, it was really <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yeah. And have you guys done gigs previously, maybe in other bands? Yeah, I, I've done quite a few, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you play in a yeah. covers band, right? Yeah. Fil- filthy White too. And I do play in a cover band in <clears throat> Scotland as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, I played in a cover band in the States too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I played in bands. I, I, so I had a long gap. I played in bands kind of regularly until I was about maybe 19, 20, and then. I met my wife and just, you know, life happened kind of thing. But you, you played in bands too, didn't you? Like, you yeah, played. I had a big gap as well. And then the band that I was in, like, we played our first gig and then the next one, Lockdown, started. So that kind of scuppered that. So it's uh, good to get going again. Yeah. Did anybody else's wife ruin the fun and stop all the gigs? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I, I probably, uh, <laughs> I was more... We're than- kidding, we're <laughs> she's gonna, you know she's gonna feel it. She's yeah. gonna hear it. Yeah. No, no. She never, she never been. She's always kind of been supportive. Like, she's coming on she's, Saturday. She's never been impressed that I play guitar. Um, but uh, no, she, um, I, it was just me. Just you know, like there was, I was doing other things and just building a life and like, yeah, like and I needed money, so I sold all my life. Can get- <laughs> so you, you've obviously got the large gig that's coming up. What? Have you got any other gigs past that, or is it pretty much getting some new recordings getting finished and then trying to get the gig diary starting to get well, booked? We, we, we've got a few, so we, we don't want to we don't want to name venues for all of them yet. Just I was about yeah, to say them. <laughs> they're all about to be like announced in the next couple of weeks, but right. we're going to have one in, in, in towards the end of March um, in Glasgow. Uh, we're going to be in Edinburgh uh, early April, um, and then. Uh, too later on in the uh, year. A couple uh, at October, November time so far. And we're, we're always looking. So, I mean, if anybody's watching this, it's like I need a daft punk band to come and, uh, <laughs> to come and support me. And then by all means, get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> so, last question for you as well, and then I'll leave you in peace. So, for each of you, who is your Mount Rushmore for whether it be a... Uh, musician or a band for each of you who, who is your four um musician or bands that you just put up at the top that whether it be performance songwriting the overall package who do you see as just the four that are your favorites that are just brilliant Do you need time to think? go for it dave, <laughs> <laughs> dave will get back to you in a few months nope. uh, lag, a bit of lag wagon. They're, they're a, a mm-hmm. kind of late 90s band that uh, is just mm-hmm. songwriting for the, of theirs. It's incredible. Um, definitely one of my favorites. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, not even, to, I'm a big Alkaline Geo fan, but not even so much them. But uh, I just think Matt Skiba is like the ultimate lyricist and songwriter. I, I love the way that guy writes and mm-hmm. creates a hook, and I wish I could do it. I keep trying, but I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Alkali Trio are up there, big, big influence, definitely, yeah. I want to say that... What about yourself? I love Alkali Trio, but I would say Brody Dahl's a better songwriter. 
Yeah. Kerry, I thought I, I thought you were maybe I thought you were going to maybe say the the songwriters for the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good songs. Yeah, yeah. Gina G. Well, for me, you know. <laughs> somebody, somebody. And let's put it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, thanks for coming on. Um, it's been good chatting to you. Hopefully, I'll get myself along to a gig. I'll keep a wee eye, uh, eye out on social media for you. Absolutely. And uh, you can keep me posted on uh, new recordings. And I'm hoping uh, if I come along to a gig, I'll maybe get to meet the missing person as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Everybody absolutely. thinks Mike is my brother. It's really weird. <laughs> or they confuse us. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange one. Yeah. <laughs> but that's on. Very much appreciated. And uh, good luck with the new recordings and future gigs as well. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Bye. 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 Bye